So just recently I saw a video from Justin's Trikes uh, on vapor blasters and specifically a project he had underway with a, a smaller, finer detail uh, gun. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it hasn't been finished yet. He, he got a bit sidetracked doing some other stuff. Um, if you haven't seen his stuff, head over and have a look. He's got some pretty cool vids there, particularly on, on vapor blasting and, and you know his journey on, on making his own, um, own cabinet. And he actually uses a very similar cabinet to this. This was one of the first ones that I did. Um, I'm showing in another video. Here, look through my older stuff. You'll see that one there. Um, it's actually got legs on it now just because it was sitting on my bench and I, uh, I wanted the space back. So those legs are off uh, one of those model uh, cabinets. I just fired them on there so I, I can still play around with it, still test it and, and uh, try a few things out. It's a usable test box, but it's not taking up too much room. Um, but this one here, you'll recognize as the uh, dishwasher build that I did. Um, this is the older gun that I did. I've, I've changed a couple of things on it. Um, actually, I'll, I'm going to do a video where I pull that down and um, just show everyone what I did to make that one work. Um, as you can see behind there is the other gun that's actually set up in this cabinet at the moment. I was doing some more testing. Um, but this one here, I just uh, wanted to throw together. Uh, might give Justin some ideas to continue on his project. Um, and also as I'm doing it, I uh, just want to try out a couple of things to see if I can make a process even simpler. Um, for, for anyone who's building their own. But what I'm planning on doing here is I just want to see how well that works as a uh, siphon feed, um, so using the venturi action inside of the nozzle there to draw forward the slurry, and then just have the slurry uh, agitated by the pump as it would uh, usually. Now it's not exactly the setup that I'd run if I was doing this, um, but it's, it's going to be enough to test to see whether or not um, the slurry stays agitated through the siphon pipe uh, in a way that will um, give us an outcome where we can actually get a finish on, on the parts we're blasting. Um, I'm going to try this old uh, rod here just to see if it'll, if it'll actually work this way. If it does, um, I'm going to see how small a pump I can use what, um, and what ways I can agitate that slurry um, just to try and open up the possibilities on um, potential ways of building this for anyone out there. Um, the idea is that this channel will be uh, mainly focused on trying to make um, vapor blast cabinets uh, more accessible to everyone, easier to build, simpler and cheaper. Um, as you can see, everything I've got here, uh, I don't have any, any cabinets that I've been building for sale. These are all test cabinets, these are all things I'm messing around with, like I say, trying to make it cheaper and more accessible. So I've got that sitting in there, um, and I'll power it up, so I'll just fire it on. Bit of a spurt out there, like I didn't hold the camera right over. But you can see there it's agitating in the reservoir, so um, now that that's up and running, I'll uh, put that part in. It's a bit hard to hold the camera while I'm working, so I, um, I may just uh, blast the part, see what sort of finish I can get and come back and, and let you all know how it goes uh, and then maybe in this video, potentially in another video, I'll pull apart this nozzle here and just show you how I put it together um, and give you a little bit more information on um, the trials I went through and, and getting it to work and um, just so if you do build your own you've got a bit of a resource there to, uh, to work from and save yourself a bit of time. So. Um, I'll blast that part, see how this works, and um, I'll come back to you. I've got to admit, <clears throat> this one surprised me. It's uh, not perfect, it's a little bit slow. Um, I had to make a couple of changes to make it work. Uh, everything I've done in the past has been um, off the back of a, a positive pressure feed to the nozzle. So shifting to a siphon feed, there are a few things I had to mess around with and change to make it work. Um, Try and get that to focus. It's not that usual sort of nice dark luster, but I suspect it's to do with the beads that I'm using in this one uh, for two reasons. One, it's quite a heavy glass bead in there, and two, it's uh, it's also got some aluminium oxide in the mix. Now, uh, the other week I actually dumped a 
a couple of handfuls of aluminum oxide in there to try and kill the pump and um, left it running for a while. As you can see, it's just formed a drip. So I, uh, I put that in there on purpose and I've left it running a few times. The reason I did that uh, with just the glass beads in it, I've done the same thing, left it running for a few hours, not doing anything just to see if it would cause any damage to the pump. Uh, when I pulled the, the nose off it, it, uh, it did show that there was the um, tiniest little bit of wear, like you can see where a, a molded plastic, where the, the mold was, um, and it actually rounded off just that last little bit of, of the, uh, uh, where the mold joins. But it wasn't wearing as much as I thought it would. So I threw in a handful, a couple of handfuls of aluminum oxide just to see uh, what that would do to the seals and, and the impellers. I uh, haven't checked the impellers yet, but it's um, just started leaking. Uh, as you saw there, I've got a bucket under there. Um, it's just started leaking now and the pump's making a bit of noise. So uh, that to me suggests that the aluminum oxide is, is probably a bit much for them. I haven't tried it with the other pumps. I just wanted to see how well this one would work um, and, and what it would take to wear it out. So if you're running uh, a dishwasher pump or something similar, I'd probably recommend against using anything heavier than glass beads in it. Uh, even crushed glass probably uh, would accelerate that wearing of, of the seals. Um, but just to get back on topic, this is the, the home built nozzle that I had from, from one of my other videos. I'll, um, I'll put something together just to show how I made that shortly. I don't think I'm going to pull it apart because I seem to have it working quite well at the moment. Uh, but I've got a few other parts that I can lay out next to it just to show how I did it. Um, so if you give me a second, I'll get set up. I'll show you how I, uh, I'll put that together. Um, but as a siphon feed, demonstrated there I think with some lighter beads uh, I mentioned before Justin's trike video um, he was looking at putting together something similar a uh, smaller simple nozzle um, he said he was using super light beads um, the super fine stuff I think something probably around the AH grade would probably be quite good for this being a bit lighter uh, might stay agitated a little better in the siphon uh, hose uh, you might have noticed there, this one here, the hose I'm using is a smaller one. Uh, now the reason I did that was to try and keep the velocity of the, uh, the slurry up and, and the hope that would uh, it keep the, the media suspended in it. And it seemed to have worked when I switched that nozzle, it, uh, uh, sorry, when I switched that hose, it definitely uh, fed the nozzle better with the slurry. Uh, the bigger hose in it before was coming sort of in... Um, and, and sections up the hose there, it had sprayed for a little bit, it was a little bit juddery and it didn't seem to be carrying as much media uh, as the smaller hose. So that was just one of the changes I made. Um, but like I say, it seems to work a little bit more fiddling around with it, I might get it to work better, hence why I'm not going to pull this particular nozzle apart. Uh, but I will get out some parts and I'll, I'll take off the, the bits that are easy to get to just so you can see how I've done this one. Um, anyone doing something similar, uh, it'll give them maybe a couple of ideas, a little bit of information on, on what I've done, what worked for me. Um, and I don't know if Justin sees it, might give him some ideas on, on what he's doing with his nozzle. Uh, like I said before, I, I haven't seen a new video with how he went with it. Um, some of the comments suggested he'd moved on to something else temporarily, but uh, maybe this, this bit of information will uh, spur him on to do some more work. And um, between... Uh, the few of us that are making these homemade uh, blasters, hopefully it'll give more people some ideas and uh, more people will get out there and, and make a few more videos. So I'm really enjoying it. It's really cool seeing how innovative everyone out there is with, with what they're building. So um, I don't know, it's kind of like a mini community coming together at this stage and, and I'm excited to see uh, just where it goes in the future. So this build here um, that I've just tried out with a siphon nozzle has given me a few ideas. Uh, so I may do another video shortly um, just try to change designs up and make everything a bit more simple so um, I'll, I'll show you the breakdown of that nozzle that'll probably be it for this video and then uh, maybe focus on on the new build and like I said the other day I was going to do a, a breakdown of the wiper as you can see I still haven't done it on this um, but I'll put something together on how I build my wipers why I do it that way and just let you know of a couple of other options that you've got um, so yeah, we'll uh, pull that nozzle apart and um, you can see how I've done this one.